two factors came into play that led the Whirlwind Fighter project to include an addition to the construction schedule for P7056. The first being the completion and delivery of the forward and cockpit sections of P7056, now on permanent display at the Kent Battle of Britain Museum. The second being the closure and auction of artefacts from a private collection in Tunbridge Wells. The Kent Battle of Britain Museum was fortunate to acquire at the auction an original heavy 404 20mm cannon from an early production whirlwind that had crashed in Scotland. The connection between the two events led to a conversation between Steve Vizard of Airframe Assembly's Isle of Wight and Dave Brocklehurst, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum's Chief Executive. Steve, seeing the progress that had been made on P7056, informed Dave that he had recovered some substantial pieces of the airframe from Scotland. Steve has now delivered much of the recovered material to display alongside P7056. These pieces are currently undergoing conservation before being displayed. To further enhance the Whirlwind display, the museum asked the Whirlwind Fighter project if it would be possible for us to manufacture another cannon base plate and supporting structure so as to display the original cannon alongside P7056. From update 7 dealing with the armament it can be seen that the structure used for the operational drum fed cannons also formed part of the front auxiliary spar and substructure of the main spar. The Whirlwind Fighter project offered another proposal that was a legitimate development of the Whirlwind's armament and was flight tested but never adopted for operational service. The Whirlwind Fighter project proposal was centred on the horizontal cannon layout designed to use a Bristol belt feed mechanism to increase the ammunition supply against the stacked paired arrangement used for the drum fed magazine system. The major factor in proposing the horizontal cannon layout being that all the cannons are carried on a single base plate structure that does not require the auxiliary spar to main spar substructure. The general consensus of why the horizontal layout was never adopted for operational service in spite of doubling the ammunition supply was one of weight. More specifically the weight distribution. Not only did the belt feed and extra ammunition add a further 184 pounds to the airframe, the upper cannons of the stacked arrangement were moved outboard of the lower cannons and move forward one and a half feet. This in turn led to a longer heavier base plate and an extended nose fairing. The Whirlwind was known as being a tail light aircraft which Teddy Petter steadfastly refused to remedy. The horizontal cannon layout would have moved the aircraft's centre of gravity further forward which would have altered the flying characteristics and severely compounded the landing issues of getting the tail down, especially on the shorter runways of the forward operational airfield. The Whirlwind was fitted with a Williamson G42B gun training camera. In the horizontal layout the camera was moved from under the fuselage and mounted above the cannons in the nose fairing. There are very very few surviving examples of the G42B camera. The Whirlwind Fighter project 
is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of volunteers dedicated to reproducing this iconic World War II fighter. If you feel you could assist the project, please visit the Whirlwind Fighter Project Facebook and web pages. Donations can be made through the Whirlwind Fighter Project's GoFundMe page. Also, please visit our active partner in the project and home of the Whirlwind Fighter Aircraft and Associated Artefacts, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum at Hawkinge. Please subscribe to the updates and many thanks for watching.